This is a video companion for the Be Credible textbook on searching historical property records with a specific focus on Douglas County in Kansas. Before we get into the searches, it's important to remember that property records live at the county level. So just like a current property search, for historical information, we need to find and figure out how to work the county database for where the property in which we're interested is located. Keep in mind that not all counties have these records online. For those that don't, we can always find hard copies of these records at the county courthouse. The records that show a property's ownership history are called deeds. Whenever someone sells or buys a property, a deed transfer takes place. And it's those deed transfers that form the historical paper trail for who has owned the property and when they owned it. Deed transfers are filed with the county. So the search you will need to perform to find a county's database should include the word deed in it. In Douglas County, the county official whose office tracks deed transfers is called the Register of Deeds. This is an elected position, so if you think that you have good organizational skills and are motivated to run in an election in the future, you too could become a Register of Deeds. From the Register of Deeds homepage, I want to choose the Real Estate Records search link. The other link, Property Search, is the link to the database on current property ownership and tax records, which we covered in another video. Before doing anything in the database, we want to create a free account. Having an account will allow us to view more records than we would be able to view without an account. You have to give your email, but you won't get spammed. So let's register a new account. Once we have a username and password, we can log in with those. The search button at the top leads me to a disclaimer, and I agree not to misuse the information in the database. On the next screen, I am presented with a number of fields, but also several options for what search fields to display. I can search by the name of the seller or the buyer, by document type, by book and page, and by a few other means. Historically, deed transfers were recorded in large books like the one in this photo. This is why each deed is associated with a book number and a page number in that book. Even though these old books are not used anymore, today deeds continue to be assigned book and page numbers, and these numbers constitute the easiest way to track down a specific deed. Note that none of the options on this list of search tabs suggests that we can search by a property's address. Because street names and numbers can change over time, and they have in Lawrence, property deeds are not assigned addresses, but rather lot designations. It's with these lot designations that we will begin our search. Let's start with the Advanced Legal tab. On this page, we will need two pieces of information to narrow down the search for a specific property. The first is going to be the subdivision name, and the second is going to be the lot number. In a previous property search, we already found the subdivision name and lot number of the property in which we are interested. It was at the bottom of the property record in a box labeled Legal Description. Because the property we are looking for in this search is one of the first that was created in Lawrence, its subdivision name is just Massachusetts, which also happens to be the street on which the property is located. But be careful, this is not the case with most other properties. If we click on the subdivision tab, we see that there are many, many subdivisions in Douglas County with longer and shorter names. So if you're looking for a non-historical property, it's very possible that your subdivision name is going to be more complicated than just Massachusetts. Next, we plug in the lot number, also from the legal description in the property record. The lot number we're looking for is 57, so we type that in. Some legal descriptions also may have a block number. Enter that number in the block field if one is listed. Finally, let's select the type of documents we want to see. Let's click on Deeds. Notice that the Document Type field populates with a bunch of document codes and surveys. Surveys contain information about the initial layout of the subdivision. This search returns two documents. One is a plat, which is a survey document, and the other one is a deed. Let's look at the plat first. This is the original plat of the city of Lawrence. 
the way that the city's early settlers imagined the city will look like. Much of the city's core does look like this, so the city has done a good job maintaining its original design. Take a close look at the little boxes on the map. Each of them has a number in it. These numbers are the lot numbers we use to search for these property records. Massachusetts lot 57 is right here. Let's go back to the search results and take a look at the deed. There are two terms that we need to become familiar with for understanding these records. These are the grantor and the grantee. The grantor is the party that grants the deed, or the seller. The grantee is the one who receives the deed, or the buyer. So in this case, we see that the deed was transferred from Ready Corporation 5 to Blue Cypress LLC, and that this was recorded in June of 2009. We also see that this deed is indexed in book 1049 on page 4608. We can click on the deed to see the actual document. On this page, we see a little more detail about this transfer. We learn, for example, that Ready Corporation 5 is a Missouri company. This is important if we want to learn who owns this company. There may be a record of this company in Kansas because it was doing business here, but we also should search the Missouri business records for this company. At this point, we want to make a note of what we have found so far. If we're trying to build a chronology of who has owned the building through time, we want to set up a table in which we can record each deed transfer. In our table, we want to make columns for the grantor or seller, the grantee or buyer, the date of the transfer, and for record keeping, the book and page numbers. Since this is the most recent deed transfer, we want to put that information at the bottom of our table. Any grantor also becomes a prior grantee. The next document we want to find will tell us when Ready Corporation 5 purchased the building. By the way, how do I know that this is the most recent deed transfer? The answer is that in Douglas County, this fully searchable database contains records from the 1980s to today. So Ready Corporation 5 owned the building until 2009 and starting before when this database lets us search. We will need to switch to a less efficient search method to find deed records from before the 1980s. To search records up to the 1980s, click the alpha or alphabetical index tab at the top of the screen. Click the drop down book indexes menu and find your subdivision name. The criteria field doesn't matter, but it does need a value, so we can type in any character there. Then press search. What we get is a scanned version of an index card for the Massachusetts subdivision, quote unquote. At the top, we see that there are 340 pages in this index. At the bottom, we see that this card is about Massachusetts Lot 168. In very faint letters, it also says that this is the second index page for this lot. The field next to navigate by indicates how many pages we want to skip ahead to. If we leave this at 1 and press forward, we will come to the second page of 340. If we navigate by 5, we will end up on page 6. If we navigate by 339, we will end up on the last page. The problem is that we don't know how many of these index pages are dedicated to each lot, and the index pages also sometimes are not in order. So if we want to find all of the index pages for lot 57, we may have to look through most of the 340 pages indexed here. This can be slow and tedious, so you may want to split up this task among a few team members. Once you find the index pages in which you're interested, you can download them and print them to have easier access to them. These index pages contain information about different types of records, but all we are interested in are the records that are designated with a D for deed. Here are the two index pages for the property in which I'm interested, Massachusetts Lot 57. On these pages, I can highlight all of the entries with a D in them and then copy that information into my chronology table. The earliest deed also has a notation that says N2 slash 5. 
This stands for north two-fifths of the lot. You might see other notes in this column. It might list the number of feet, for example, along a street that a property measures. In my case, this deed says that Bertha Ainsworth sold to George Ecke the north two-fifths of the lot. It may be interesting to find out where the other three-fifths of the lot came from. Once I have the book and page numbers of some deeds, I can start looking them up in the digitized database. I want to look up these deeds by book and page numbers. This database contains the digital copies of the deeds after 1946. So the earliest one I can look up is the one in book 306, page number 646. I can click on the first record in this list to see the 1969 deed transfer from Elizabeth Vincent to the Bell Music Company. So what about deeds before 1946 and what about records in these index pages before the 1920s that aren't listed here? Unfortunately, these records do not exist online, but they can be accessed very easily in person at the Douglas County Courthouse in the Office of the Register of Deeds. In this office, there are public use terminals that contain digital copies of older indexes and older deeds and public servants whose job it is to help you find what you're looking for. They're great and they will be happy to answer all your questions. So if you're interested in older records, continue your search in person at the courthouse. Up to now, we were searching for information about a specific property, but we can also search by the name of an individual in whom we are interested. So let's go back to the search page and search by name. We can search by grant or grantee or both. Let's leave this information as both and let's type in the name of our favorite men's basketball coach. As before, let's select deeds as the document type in which we are interested. We get five records back dating to 2003. We can look closer at each of these records to see what they're about. But just by glancing at the information in these lines, we can deduce that Bill and Cindy Self bought a property in Fall Creek Farms, Block 4, Lot 1. Then a year later, they bought Lot 2 in the same block. Then it looks like they sold the south half of Block 2. Then in 2009, they bought Bowerbrook Estates, Lot 5. And later that year, they sold Lots 1, 2, and 3 in Fall Creek Farms. So it looks like the only property they own now is the one in Bowerbrook Estates. Since we know from a previous search that Bill and Cindy Self own some companies, and as we saw with Ready Corporation 5 and Blue Cypress LLC, it's possible to own a property through a company that you own. If we were doing a thorough search on Bill and Cindy Self's properties, we would also want to search for these companies as property owners in the records. That search would look the same way as the name search we just conducted, but we would just enter their company names in place of the names. We already know Bill Self's address from a previous search, but if we didn't, we could look up the survey document for Bowerbrook Estates and then figure out an address from there. To start that process, we go back to Advanced Legal and we select Bowerbrook as the subdivision. We also select Surveys as the category of records we want to see. The first records on a list of surveys is always the original plat or description of the subdivision. This shows us a map of what the subdivision looked like originally, in this case in 1999. Moving around this map and zooming in and out, we can figure out about where in the city it's located. In this case, we see that the main road is Folks Road and the subdivision street is North 1665 Road. Using Google Maps, we can figure out that a curved road off Folks Road is now called Bowerbrook Court. And this is the street name we can type into the current property search database to find Bill Self's actual address. And that's how you search historical property records in Douglas County, Kansas. Keep in mind that because these records are kept at the county level, if you're looking for property records in another county, you will need to find its property database or deeds database and figure out how to make it work. I wish you many successful and interesting searches.